Hi, so welcome to TWR Facebook Live uh, once again. And as you all know, the, I'm traveling to India, I just arrived yesterday. And on my way to Mary Monastery, visit His Holiness Lungto Tembinye Marambuche. And uh, so I know that in the monastery, the connections are, internet connections are not good. So I've heard talk to quite a few of them, monks there. So I'm on my way up seven, eight hours of uh, highway traffic, uh, a lot of uh, chaos on the road, but um, just before I get to the mountain, I stop here in a tea shop and a very nice gentleman let me come in and use his uh, nicely comfortable air conditioned little room here so so I'm able to do use it it now it looks like uh, the internet connection is going doing well so so good to see you all I just wanted to let you all know for next couple of months uh, as I try I'm traveling a lot it seems like really difficult to have a fixed time and date to do, to do these Facebook uh, live and particularly um, to schedule something is difficult. So, so this will be very spontaneous, quite uh, regularly. But I will try to maybe announce one or two day before I do it. And so I would like all of you to just uh, keep uh, tune in uh, information on my Facebook. So I will I will make. Uh, the available there, so information is available there, so people know when I'm going to uh, do the Facebook Live. So, so anyway, today is uh, it's a one of the pit instructions. So uh, today's uh, topic we talk we we will talk a little bit about finding your spiritual path, which is kind of very very general uh, discussion. And uh, uh, so I thought few thought about it a little bit and to see what we could discuss about it and uh, I think obviously um, this is a very general question for everybody and there is so many world religion, different spiritual tradition, different wisdom tradition, different cultures and um, of course there is like a huge place out there and but basically finding something what is right for you is a big question for everybody so I think um, I will maybe say a few words in the very general and then maybe a few words a little bit more specific according to Tibetan tradition. Um, so first of all, I thought maybe because since I've been like teaching for 25 years in the West, I've met many people, uh, some people who are very, very, uh, very dedicated, focus on one tradition, and other people who are more open, more more inclusive, and doing few traditions. And some people are almost doing, um, you know, every year new religion, new tradition, and getting totally, getting totally confused. Also, so somehow I think um, it's a really question, good question about for each individual that what your what your needs is, what you're seeking for. Uh, for in order to continuously explore, uh, grow, and develop your being. So I think it's a very general question. So, so one thing I thought about it is really like a, a finding um, a finding a home uh, in a spiritual tradition which really talks to your heart. Uh, intellectually which is really making sense to you so both heart and the brain I think if both is making good sense to you then I think probably it's good to explore and try and uh, my one time somebody asked my teacher uh, a question saying how how would I find a right teacher and um, so it was uh, his answer was a very good answer obviously and his answer was that, you know, first you um, listen to your heart. If your heart feels the connection to the person, you can trust the person. 
and uh, and also not only your heart and emotion but also intellectually you analyze the person uh, the background history uh, everything whatever you can uh, learn and then come to a conclusion if it feels right for you that you can trust and you can learn from then you if you can say if you feel enough comfortable enough to say somebody is your teacher then commit to that and there on it's your responsibility to also work uh, also on trying to figure out and trying to go uh, develop a relationship deeper um, not get confused by many different things for example sometimes people uh, always wanted to engage with a famous teacher or something like that or sometimes if anybody says something bad about that teacher and then immediately you get confused and you lose the connection and uh, or some so basically if the teachers did not fulfill your ego then immediately you get hurt and you get disappointed and then you 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 kind of begin to lose the connection and criticize the teacher but if it's obviously um, something if ego is not fulfilled then immediately it's become very vulnerable and easy to lose the connection that should not be like that so at some point if you after you make your heart connection after you make your intellectually you analyze and you feel the right then that point you have a little bit more responsibility to not easily trigger by outer situation circumstances people's uh, talking and your own emotions and egos and your own not you know not getting into that so basically taking some responsible for your decision it's like a little bit like a, 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 a genuine relationship with somebody if it's, it's a couple that you you not only just emotionally fall in love with somebody but just also you you're trying to make good sense uh, intellectually you know you're trying to see comparable uh, are you with that person you have same values same needs same expectations whatever way you can analyze and after you feel your you know you feel hard is connection then then you 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 can also think about that person is right for you then some point then you cannot you have to make a work on it you have to not always try to um, easy change your mind you know dumb somebody easily like that you know one time i saw this beautiful couple uh, on a, the facebook i guess somewhere that uh, that very old couple 70 80 years old couple together living there and somebody asked this question how come you can r um, be together this long and this beautifully and then the, the one of them answers the question saying in we fix our relationship we don't change our relationship so in some sense of ability to take responsible and trying to figure out solution in conflict and anything like that not immediately change things so i i think in some sense if as as a teacher is the same if also if it's a tradition that you're trying to practice with spiritual path that you really feel connection with your heart and your head both and you have analyzed it you you feel very comfortable then that point you know if there's any challenges comes i think it's important to trying to figure out how to overcome those challenges rather than rather than change right away so that i think um, maybe this is the discussion about after you find something uh, that's how you would trying to relate at least i feel that's what i would trying to relate but maybe the first question is how do you find the right one so i think uh, that's kind of more complicated question so i think in some sense from my point of view with spiritual path which really um faces the truth not avoiding the truth at uh, the spiritual path which does not produces more suffering not um i say a spiritual path which is uh, really helps to um minimize your suffering the human suffering not maximize i was just watching a film yesterday on the plane about the christianity in japan and how they suffered there uh, because of you know the strong presence of buddhism there so it was it was i don't know how true all the story is but 
but it made me think about, you know, in the world today, how much sometimes religion or spirituality, which meant to minimize suffering in human life, but sometimes it seems like a, it's a, really like a question about is it really minimizing the human suffering, or is it really some some cases creating more suffering in human life because of the religion divisions and beliefs and and all those things. So in some sense, I think I feel it's really important to one of the basic qualities is the spiritual path that you follow. You wanted to make you. I wanted to make sure that the path itself is really moving toward the truth, not avoiding the truth. Path itself is really minimizing my suffering and minimizing the human suffering, and not creating more in me or in others. And if it's, if it's the case of it's really producing more in suffering, more in me, conflict more in me and others, then I will question those part. Maybe sometime it's not a the path itself. Every spiritual tradition, every major religion, they have a truth there, but sometimes way it is presented, way it is culturally involved, way it is social engagement, way it's it's involvement in economy, power, power, and so on, so on, political, and so on. So on. it gets into a very complicated situation, and those those cases, it's very much about really like a, a personal judgment. Do your best judgment to see if something is for you or not. So I think I don't know what else to say really. Uh, in in to, to speaking in a general sense, what to say about it than what I just did. But a little bit more specific specific in our tradition in the in the Buddhist in the sense of Tibetan Buddhism or Bain tradition. I think uh, we we would talk about. You know, when the Buddha taught the teaching, Buddha always taught there is no um, one teaching. There, there are many teachings, and these many different form of teaching, uh, for many form of teaching for the single truth is taught differently because of the students were listeners were at different stages. You know, some were more advanced and more developed, and some were. Less less developed and some are very uh, very unmature, very basic basic, and so according to their mindset, the Buddha's teachings were taught in in the Bhagavad tradition. Same we say the same thing. The nine ways of Bhagavad, nine because there was a need of nine, not because there's a nine different truths, but because there are nine different listeners, nine different stages of people who could not understand one way, so I have to explain nine different ways. So, but also sometimes we say uh, uh, three major parts, like uh, uh, in Tibetan we say Pang Jur Tholsum, Pang Jur Tholvi Lamsum, a path of renunciation and path of transformation and path of liberation. So basically, what he's saying is that um, it's it's the it's the way you handle your ignorance, where you handle the conflict, where you handle handle your negative emotions, fears. Is there is not one way. There's a different ways, like way you would handle the poison. So a poison plant, uh, ordinary person will avoid it, run away, because if you get close, if you touch, if you tea, eat. You die, so that's why you have run away. You renounce the poison. You run away from the poison. That's obviously one approach. Or doctor, a medical doctor, herbologist, somebody who know the poison, they will dry it or boil it and or, or mix it with something else. But the same substance will be transformed as a medicine. That means is the approach of the doctor who who know how to work with that herb. That that poison, but uh, but definitely a doctor will not run away from it or avoid it because doctor will get closer. Doctor will need that poison to make it more medicine. So so clearly a path of transformation is one one way in which um, things can be transformed and uh, develop more. And the last one will be the approach of. Liberation, like a peacock. Peacock eats poison, so peacock will not 
uh, hurt by the poison. Peacock, actually, all the colors and the feathers are supposed to be enhanced so much by the poison. So, so either you you treat your poison, uh, negative emotion or your inner poisons like a peacock, your ability to eat directly, or that means not avoid it, uh, face it, accommodate whole process in through in their wisdom. Or you you are like a doctor, like a tan tantric practitioners who uh, not able to eat it that as a raw, but able to work with it and transform. Or maybe you're not like a, you're not capable of like a doctor. You're like completely ordinary pe person. That means you're just trying to avoid it. So basically, there's a three different paths, a spiritual path in our tradition. I guess if you look that not necessarily talking about the Sutra, Tantra and the Dzogchen, but if you think about the approach of path itself, renouncing or transforming or liberating, you can probably look in all the spiritual paths in the world. Their different ones might have a different characteristic, some of them really avoiding everything, some of them working more trans transformation path, some of them really like able to work directly, not 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 running away, not changing it, but facing it as it is, as a truth. So, uh, so that what it what it's saying is basically each characteristic of persons are different. So some people clearly are naturally they are people who are they love discipline, they love to be told what to do, uh, they love to follow somebody, they love to. Uh, stay in the structures and rules, they like to avoid conflicts and they are not explorer and adventure person. So they are more like a really like a part of renunciation, but others are more inventor, creator, transformer, always different. So basically I guess it's a very much a different personality, looking at your own personality, that who you are and what approaches is best for you and what part is best for you, I guess the best person to judge that it's it's your really yourself, no one else. But exploring all what is out there and judging for yourself. And in the end of the day, I think it's very much being self-responsible. Either it's a finding your spiritual path or finding your mentor, teacher, your life, your partner, your husband, wife. At some point, this this whole idea of blaming somebody else for your suffering. I think partially there are people in the world who are not good and they are definitely, uh, can, they can create more causes and pain in your life, but you also have a responsibility not to engage with those people. So basically, if you not looking at uh, some sense of you, uh, like, a, like a really like a fully blaming somebody else for your own suffering. I don't think that's fear also. So so anyway, I think um, um, li life is, I think, it's too precious to uh, worry about things. Life is too precious to hate somebody. And I think life is it's too precious. So we should all do our best in our life. Um, always trying to um, do your best and help others and then when somebody's in need and uh, and whatever you find in your life as a spiritual path be make the best out of it go closer and deeper and any conflict in your relation in your spiritual path with your um, Sangha member with your um, uh, mentor with the teacher or with the group I think uh, always whenever there is a conflict it's always question about going closer to fix it not running away and thinking that it will fix by itself distancing is a more conflict you create more space for conflict and doubts if you go closer communicate more talk more feel more connection with somebody I think you will you have a greater chance to resolve any conflict. So Chering is waiting, my wife is waiting outside and then drinking her tea and the driver is outside in the car. So I 
it's already around seven o'clock here still a couple of hours more drive to the monastery it will, I don't want to get too late flying all night yesterday so so I I uh, it was already it was nice to see you I see over 130 pe 33 people without you know no schedule so it's wonderful to see you all and um, so I will so please tune in to Facebook and I will inform you uh, at least day before or something like that and so whenever the next pit instruction will be I will be there thank you so much all my love blessings take care bye